Hey, good afternoon, church. Thanks for being a part of our weekly devotions. I apologize, this is actually a day late. We've been trying to put these out on Wednesday and yesterday I completely spaced it out. So uh, I hope that this connects with you. Uh, I've been thinking about this prayer a lot lately uh, called the Serenity Prayer and wanted to share it again with you. I've, I've used it in messages before, but I find myself coming back to it as a, as a prayer and as a meditation and to sort out uh, with the Lord things that are going on in my own heart. And you can find this online by just um, Googling the Serenity Prayer. Uh, I'm going to read the first part of it. At the end, I'll read the last part. And most often you hear the first part of this prayer. But it says, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Uh, these three movements of this prayer are essential for us as believers to sort out the things that are going on in the world around us and to ask the question, God, what would you have me do um, as, as a part of the solutions? And to really keep the, uh, the, the peace of the Lord as the center of our of our hearts Uh, the first movement of this prayer is god give me the serenity grant me the serenity to serenity to accept things i cannot change the word serenity means peace and philippians 4 11 paul uh, gives us his uh, his peace about his circumstances which is uh, finding himself in in jail for preaching the gospel and he's talking about the different things that have gone on in his life and what he's learned. He says, Philippians 4.11, in Philippians 4.11, he says, For I have learned in whatever situations I am to be content. This word situation means circumstances out of his control. It also refers to circumstances that are, that are affected because of decisions that Paul made. And so these are uh, where we find ourselves in the present. These are our circumstances. And the invitation from the gospel is that we trust the Lord with all the things in this life that we cannot change. And this isn't something that just comes naturally to us. This is something that we really have to learn. I think our natural tendency is to flip things upside down and to try to change the things that we can't change, which is primarily other people, uh, the circumstances around us, and, uh, and even our past, that we try to do that in our future instead of living in the present and being able to accept some things that uh, are out of our control. There's past decisions can't be changed. There's a lot of the um, personalities in our families and the situations in our families that we cannot change. Um, there's just a lot that the sooner we accept the people in our lives and the circumstances in our lives and, and look at them realistically and turn them over to God, the more we can have the energy from the Lord to do the things he's calling us to do and asking us to do. That leads us to the second motion, you know, the second um, part of this prayer, motion of this prayer, which is the courage to change. Paul goes on to say in verse 13, Philippians 4, 13, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. And so this is uh, really something that uh, takes our discernment. But oftentimes when we are trying to change things we cannot, worrying about things and people that we cannot change, we are out of energy in order to be able to make the changes God has asked us to do. And we find ourselves in a victim role, a victim mentality, wishing our circumstances were different, but not doing anything to change what's going on in our own hearts and our own habits and our own hangups and in our lives. And so we have to ask God to give us the strength. And God gives us the strength to change ourselves. That's where his power is poured out in us. He gives us the strength to recognize the sinful habits in our lives. He gives us the strength to recognize his provision. He gives us the strength to look at uh, what we've been called to do and to take action in serving others. And so we need that 
power and we need courage at the bottom of most of our fears, most of our worries, most of our anxiousness, most of our depression and discouragement, most of our addictions is fear and resentment. Uh, fear is oftentimes what fuels even our resentment can be at the very bottom. And the scriptures tell us that perfect love drives out fear. And fear is our natural heart's posture towards the world, is trying to protect instead of being curious about what God's doing and leaning into his spirit about what he wants to do in and through us. And then the next part of this is the wisdom to know the difference. James tells us that if we lack wisdom, that we need to ask God and that God gives wisdom to his people, those who ask uh, abundantly. And it's a gift that God gives us. And we need to know the wisdom between the things we can change and the things we can't change. We also need to know God's timing. Sometimes it's not the right timing in our life to tackle a certain situation. And it's time for us to wait and watch what God's doing. Other times God says it's time to move. And if we don't rely on his spirit and we don't pray this prayer often or a prayer like it often, God, give me the wisdom to know the difference. I think for Catherine and I, this is probably the prayer we pray the most together when we sit down and pray. God, give us wisdom about our kids. Help us to know how, how can we be encouraging them? Where are we supposed to stand up and encourage to set boundaries or you know, to, uh, to speak into their life truth? And God promises us to give us wisdom. And those that pray for wisdom and those that lean on God for wisdom have the ability to sort out these things and to be at peace, even in times of turmoil, and at the same time, be people of action through our prayers. Um, so I want to read this, Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Do not be anxious about anything. And if we, if we live and pray, pray these uh, movements in the serenity prayer, uh, the promise is that we can live without being controlled by our anxiety. doesn't mean that we're not going to have to fight against it uh, through prayer, or, uh, through the truth of God's word, but we can live in freedom. But in everything by prayer and supplication, asking God for what we need, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and minds in Christ Jesus. doesn't say that the circumstances are going to turn out the way that we hope they will but our hearts will turn towards him in the way that he would hope that, that they would. And so I want to read the last part of this prayer, which I think is so powerful and doesn't often get read very often. After the part that says, courage, the courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference, it invites us into this. God, help me to live one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as the pathway to peace, taking as he did the sinful world at, as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that he will make all things right if I surrender to his will, that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with him forever in the next. Amen. And so I pray for God's happiness in your life, the happiness that comes from casting our cares upon him, the happiness that comes from asking him for the wisdom to be about his business in our own hearts, uh, about serving in his kingdom, about taking our needs and the needs of this world to him in prayer, but also that God would clear away from your mind and your heart all of the anxiousness that has been building up in your life of trying to worry and control the things that you cannot control which is leaving you and I drained often to have the energy and the courage to face the things that we so desperately need to in our own hearts. So God bless. Have a great rest of your week. I'm excited, hopefully, to see you Sunday. If you're out and about, you're feeling comfortable being around some people, our outdoor services are a great place to reconnect and to worship. And so Sunday at nine o'clock and 1045, we're having outdoor services. Please come. There's no RSVP. Just come as you are. We'll direct you as you get there about where you can sit or you can stay in your car. So uh, I hope to see you soon. God bless.